Hey guys, uh, welcome to College United Engineering with Bungani Gumele. So today we'll be doing sequence five. I you know sequence five says that uh, when start button is activated, motor one must start rotating. 10 seconds after motor one is started, motor two must start rotating automatically. So it means that you don't have to press again, you only press once, the start button. Then M1 must keep on rotating. Then 10 seconds after motor two has started, Rotating, motor one must stop rotating automatically. Automatically. Yeah. So motor one must stop rotating automatically without you stopping it. While motor two continues to rotate. So I will only draw the control circuit. Go and watch sequence one for your uh, main circuit. So this is how your control circuit will be where well, the CB overload one overload two emergency stop then stop one then I'm just going to explain the tricky part this one we all know how it goes so we are going to have first of all we are going to have one start button but we are going to have we are going to have both retainers for contactor one and contactor two on the same start button. So this is retainer one for contactor one and for contactor two. Motor one and this side is for motor two. So this will be a normally open for M1 and normally open for M2. Yeah, I hope you'll see. 13, 14, motor one. Yeah, so this retainer is for, it's a normal open for motor one, and this retainer is a normal open for motor two, or for contactor one, uh, contactor two and contactor one. So remember the left hand side is always for motor one, and your left hand side is always for a motor two. Then, will either be a line or a neutral here. Then we'll see, let's just use M. Yeah, just so that everyone is not confused. But this is a coil, remember. So, we are going to have two coils. This is for motor two, A1, a1, A2, yeah. And then we connect it like this. So remember the statement st says that uh, your motor two must run automatically 10 seconds after motor one started. So I'm going to introduce a timer. Then our timer will be a delay on. Our time will be for delay on. So this is what is going to happen. We are going to put a normal open here. So that this coil energizes coil this coil energizes 10 seconds after motor one started running. So it's a normally open of timer one. Aha. Uh -huh. And then Remember the statement says also, 10 seconds after motor two has started rotating, motor one must stop. So we're going to introduce another time. It's going to be a delay on. But now, we are not going to connect this timer here because of we want it to energize at the same time when uh, coil 2 is being energized. So I'm going to connect it here. Okay, let me see. Yeah, but now remember we say that uh, motor 1 must stop 10 seconds after counting. So it, uh, after motor 2, uh, motor 1 must stop 10, uh, 10 seconds after motor 2 uh, started. So we are going to introduce a normal open here going to be a normal open of timer two. So that when this one 
energizes, it starts counting. Then after 10 seconds, here there will be an open circuit. So that motor two stops automatically. Can, you can do your normal open. Uh, it's gonna be a normal close, not a normal open, yeah. Forgive me for that. You can write it like that or you can write it like this. Yeah, we're introducing a normally closed here, not a normal open. We're introducing a normally closed. You can draw it like this, or you can also do it like, like this, it's still fine. Yeah, so we're having a normal close, not a normal open, because of we want this one to become a normal open after 10 seconds. Motor 2 has started rotating. So this is how your circuit should look like. And remember, we don't connect this timer here. I know many people love it to connect it here. But if you connect it here, remember, when a motor 2 rotates, after 10 seconds, it's going to be an open circuit here. And what happens to, to this timer? It de-energizes, and when it de-energizes here, it has to become a, a normally close, a, a normal open. Because remember, when after 10 seconds, this one will become a normally closed. But when it de-energizes it, it's going to become a normally open. And remember, we say that uh, motor 2 must continue to run. So for us to be able to make motor 2 to continue to run, we connect it here. We connect it there, not here. So this is how your circuit should look like. Normally close of timer 2. Yeah. So that's it. Thank you for watching. Let's meet on the next video. Uh, don't forget to like, uh, share, and subscribe. Uh, it's very simple. Just have to understand that 10 seconds after we have pressed the start button, motor 1 must start rotating. Then after uh, motor 2 must start rotating. Then after 10 seconds, motor 2 has started. Then motor 1 must stop rotating. But don't stop the don't stop uh, timer 1. Let it continue to be energized so that that coil, uh, the, the normal uh, closed, it stays a normal closed. Otherwise, it will become a normal open. Thank you for watching. Shop, shop.